So he went to Lowe's Home Depot kind of place <laughs> and, and bought. So we're going, what are we doing? We want to give it to the Fox family. How's that? So that's, that's what we're doing with that. I thought that was really interesting. But lots of you have helped in lots of ways with not only the Fox family, but with the King family. Uh, uh, Kamara King lost. Yeah, no, Al has um, the gift cards and the gifts. Are, are you having trouble talking today? This is way oh. the last two days. Oh. Oh. Anyway, we're going to deliver them after church. Right after church, Al and I are going to go to the, to the King's house and deliver gifts. Thank you all for providing the gifts yeah, that it was really, it was a lot. Dacklin, I think is his name, that went in for Christmas. Are those are there. Kaylin or something like that. Yeah, Kim, yeah Kamara, I think is her name, yeah. Yeah, so thank you for all your help with that. If you still want to help, all you have to do is hand it to me and we'll get it to them immediately following worship. I think that's everything that I have. Anybody else? Yes? Um, one of the teachers at the elementary school, um, a couple of weeks ago, they were going to be like 25 weeks, and, wow. and they, they lost the baby. Oh, so, wow. it's, it's a so you don't know the name? I you? do, but... Oh, okay. We'll just leave it, leave it that one of the teachers of the elementary that lost, lost her baby. Yeah, Kristen's a teacher. That's her name. And they lost her baby, I think. I didn't hear it. Chris Kubinak. Chris Kubinak, because I would like yeah, to keep that. Um, it was like, I think, it was the beginning of this week or the very end of last week. So, the baby died from neck on like, Thursday, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. Last week, was it? This past this week. This past week, yeah. There, she's a, her husband, who the next husband is a cousin to my hairdresser, so I had to change but my appointment know. so she could go to the uh, funeral yeah. and all that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Keep, keep yeah. Chris and her family in your prayers. That's a deep, deep grief at a really tough time. Thank you. I think that's all that. Anybody else on the announcements? That's all I have. If you would stand for our uh, first hymn, number 175, while shepherds watch the flocks by night. Um.
Today we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love. It is one of the most powerful forces in the world. Like the love we feel for our families, our friends, our significant others, it can be the love we feel for ourselves. Loving others brings us closer to our spirituality. Understanding the love better helps us understand God. God and love are synonymous. God is not an attribute. Love is not an attribute of God. It is God. Whatever God is, love is. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, help me feel your love, that above all things I may know that I am loved by you. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> if you would join me responsibly in the call to worship. Sing a new song, tell of salvation each day. We will declare God's glory among the nations. God's marvelous works among all people. Bring tributes of uh, praise and ascribe glory to God. That God's sanctuary may be filled with majesty. Pray with me. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this Christmas Eve, for all the joy, the love, the peace. We thank you for family that's joining so many of us, gathering on this day. We thank you for the people that are like family to us, that love us and wish the best for us. For the cards we've received and for the best wishes that so many have given us. We thank you for this time of worship when we can experience again the fullness of your love. So as we worship this day, may your spirit surround us in a special way and lift our hearts in the name of Jesus. Would the children please come forward? Would a child please come forward? Good morning. You got anything on your Christmas wish list? You want to tell anybody what it is? Okay. Some people, have you ever <coughs> wished for a puppy? You ever wished, did you get your puppy? Yeah. Wonderful. I wished for a puppy and my brother bought me this puppy and this is the perfect puppy because it doesn't poop on the carpet it doesn't tear things up when i want it to love me it just loves me it looks over me isn't that a perfect puppy wouldn't you like to have this puppy rather than the puppy you've got uh, uh, why not because you like your puppy better would you like a puppy like this one? That, would you like that your puppy didn't mess on the carpet and chew things up and cause all kinds of trouble? Wouldn't you like one that would just let you on? <laughs> Probably not. Because even though you can make it do exactly what you want it to do, it can't really love you. You just make it look like it's loving you. It, it doesn't really feel good when you call your puppy, what's your puppy's name? Eva. Eva. No. Diva. Diva? Diva. Oh, I get it. I get it. Oh, Diva. If you say, here Diva, and Diva comes and runs up in your lap, doesn't that feel good? Because you know it's got a choice. It could say, I'm not going to tear something up. But when they have a choice and they choose to love you, that feels so good. The reason I'm telling you that is one of the reasons that we have Christmas is because God decided to make us not puppets. He could have made us people that couldn't ever do anything wrong. They would all, we always do exactly what we're doing. We go to church on Sunday, we pray. We never make any mistakes. We never sin. But we'd be like puppets. And God said, oh, there's no relationship there. I wanted them to be free. So he made us, like your puppy diva, free to choose. And that way, when we choose to love God, God goes, oh, that feels so good. I love it. But we do mess things up. <coughs> like your dog messes things up every once in a while. In 
order to make all of that go away, to, to make that good, God sent Jesus to say, we want to, I want to experience exactly what you experienced and provide a way for you to be made good with me again so that there's no separation for us forever. And so that's why we have Christmas, because Jesus came. Because we keep making mistakes and we keep doing things not quite right. Jesus came to say, no, you're, you are still so loved. Uh, that's the really good news of Christmas. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, that you made us free. Able to choose. And thank you for the times that we choose well and are filled to overflow. And for the times when we don't choose well and we're separated from you, we thank you for sending Jesus to make everything good. Bless us during this Christmas time with the love of Christ. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I can freely. <coughs> Santa Claus, is, it's rumored to say that Santa Claus gives his reindeer moose much. I'm not sure if that's true. I just heard that rumor somewhere. But anyway, this is moose much. You want some moose much? I didn't think you did. <laughs> Would you give a handful of this to somebody? Go Warren. Warren would like lose no. much, I'm not sure. And anybody else that you can find out there that wants to <coughs> drop some in their hands. Thank you. Now, if you would rise as we sing our next hymn, number 178 of Little Town of Bethlehem.
O God of compassion, and mercy upon us, be sent forth through the Spirit, be dedicated in order to your counsel. Christ dwells among us, yet we fail to obey him. We sing of peace on earth, yet hostility continues. An angel is herald through the tides, yet we pray in the days. For we are delivered and in direct misuse of your graciousness, and make us worthy of you. The good news of the scripture is even though you fall short and make bad choices, that God comes to offer cleansing and forgiveness. And if you confess honestly with your heart, your sins are indeed forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sent at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the light everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Scripture lesson for this day is taken from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter beginning with the 26th verse. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. May God add blessings to the reading and hearing of this is holy word. Amen. Would you pray? Lord, on this Christmas Eve, more than 2,000 years since your original coming, may the wonder of Christ's birth be made new again in us. So open our hearts to see what you would have us see and feel what you would have us feel. Thank you, O God, for loving us, for sending your Son, Jesus, to be present with us. We pray that we might receive him again now. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be good in your sight. Make that possible by the work of your spirit. Thank you, God, for being our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <coughs> Just for a little bit, imagine that you were God. If you were God, creator of everything, God Almighty, what would you create? What would you do? You're eternal. You, you can do whatever you want to do. What would you create? God chose to make the heavens and the earth and marvelous things all over the earth, but his prized possession was making 
people. If you were God Almighty, creator of everything, would you make people like God made them? Make these people? I'm, I'm thinking in the children's room is probably a good idea. Wouldn't you just make creatures that couldn't mess up? They would just come and they would love on you and, and you'd and never make mistakes. Why, why wouldn't God do that? Because you know how it feels if a puppet comes and loves on you. You go, oh, they, didn't choose, they didn't choose to love me. So God created people with free choice. That's what the Garden of Eden about. The apple in the garden. Why did God put the apple in there? If you didn't want them to eat it, don't put the apple. Well, that whole story is about God saying, I want you to know you have a choice. You can choose to love me or you can choose to run the other way. Because God wanted to be in a relationship with people like us. That's why we created or created that way. That's why God put the apple there. It's amazing. That's the way we're created. If you were God Almighty, creator of everything, creator of these people that now have a choice, what would you do when they didn't choose? Well, when they sinned. Spank them? Send them to the room? Punish us? That's really not necessary because, like the scripture says, the wages of sin is death. Sin has its own punishment. When you, you know that. When you choose poorly, you pay, you pay somewhere down the line because of the decision you made. It always seems to hurt us. So if you were God, what would you do about that? Well, they are all messing up and they, they are getting separated from me and it doesn't feel... Maybe they ought to just rot in hell. But God said, I, I don't want that for them. I love them. And so he said, the only way I can figure out to do that is to create, for me, a chance to be present with them in human form, in Jesus. To be present with them and give them a way out so that when they do mess up, as they surely will, that they can turn to me and be forgiven. And we can be made right and whole again. What an incredible solution to a problem of sin. If you were God Almighty, creator of everything, how would you do that? How, how would you come to people like us? Think about that. Okay, we've got these people down here and they, they love me sometimes and that feels really good and they mess up sometimes. I want to be with them. So how should you appear to them to let them know that you are God in their midst? My choice would have been, I think I will come down on a cloud with lightning and thunder and a thousand angels, trumpets blowing, and everybody going, whoa. That's a cool way to come. Uh, somebody said, you know, um, Alexander the Great, who was, was busy in Jesus' time, would have come in on a plunging war horse. Bucephalus, I think is the horse's name. Be powerful war horse. That'd be a great way to ride in. Everybody go, whoa. <coughs> or maybe with a thousand armies of angels, everybody would go, whoa. Isn't it incredible? That God Almighty, creator of everything, chose to come to us as a baby. A helpless baby lying in a manger. Why? Something to do with the powers of this world which seem to be the, the way to go. That's not really it. It's that there's something about being lowly and weak and beneath and serving and loving that is the real power 
this world. And in Christ, you begin to see that. But as Christ grew and walked among us, that this is the way to fullness of life. Not climbing a ladder and being more powerful and getting more money and telling more people what to do. But in learning to be a servant and in loving. That's, that's where the real good stuff it takes a lot of study and a lot of uh, bending of our pride for us to be able to realize that. But once we do that, you who are helping the, the Fox family and the King family, you know that there's something about that that just feels really good. Life giving. Uh, this God never forces us like a puppet to accept the work of Jesus, but continues to invite and encourage us and to love us into doing the things that bring us such life. Just imagine, just imagine for a moment God with us. Uh, a God who knows what it's like to have seasonal allergies. A God who's got a cough. Greg's coughing for 100 days now. Uh, a God who wakes up with, I don't know if God, if Jesus ever got old enough to have arthritis. But I think you would know what that felt like. To be disappointed by the people and the things that they tell you. To have hurts and to feel the things that we feel. Isn't that amazing? Just imagine God knowing the stuff that you're going through and said, I know what you're going through. I know. And I love you. And I promise to work in all those things for good. That's the promise. It's, it's beyond comprehension to us that a God who is almighty, creator of everything, would choose to be present with us, but that's exactly what God does. Feels good for God, too, I think, to have this relationship with us. God chooses to know us and to be present with us. The word Emmanuel, the name they gave Jesus, Emmanuel means God with us. I want you to think, particularly today, tomorrow, as your families gather or you do some things that make this Christmas season special, how, what that means to have God with us. Diane and I are going to sing Emmanuel, and uh, you take this time to meditate on just that. God with us. Amen. 
Chris Kubinick and family and their grief, for the Fox family and the King family as they go through tough times at Christmas, for Gary Braun and Val Watson and Melvin Shapiro and Melvin Chernyshack and all those that we name silently, place your healing hand upon them. pray for the people of the world far beyond our borders. People who live in difficult situations, life-threatening situations, people who live in countries torn by war, people who have unbelievable hardship in their life. If there are things that we can do to be a part of making their life better, move us that direction. But at least hear our prayers and know our love for those people in our earnest prayer that your spirit might reach out and touch them in ways that we never could. You know all the prayers of our hearts. You know the things that we ask for and the things that we need. We pray that you will bind up all that stuff, even the things we can't put into words. Hear the deepest prayers of our hearts as we pray the prayer you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take a moment to sign that text. <coughs>
Thank you, Corey, for the water for your job. You all always do a uh, play for us, so thank you for that. Y'all just give them a hand real quick because they feel so bad with us. Uh, by the way, it's raining outside. Anybody needs to go back for a restroom or a coffee break or anything like that, you can go this direction if you like. Otherwise, we'll see you tonight in worship at 6 o'clock right here at the church. Uh, somebody sent me a Christmas to-do to list. I don't know if you've seen this, but I love it. It's a Christmas to-do list. It has on it, buy presents, and they scratched out the buy and put B present. <laughs> wrap gifts, and they scratched out the gifts and said, wrap someone in a hug. Send gifts, and it says, wrap, struck out the gifts and said, send peace. Shop for food. It says donate food. See the lights. And it said be the light. So may you go forth with the joy of Christ and then you can be the light. Wrap somebody in a hug today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and fill you to overflowing with his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't need to be ushered out. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Stop. <laughs>